What up? 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 Hey, good people, we're here once again, as usual, every Thursday at 1 p.m. on the House of Ruby YouTube channel. My name is Pastor DJ, but you can call me Mrs. President I mean, because why not? If you've not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, you shouldn't be having this conversation by now, honestly, because every Thursday at 1 p.m. I give you a good word, like Apostle Grace Luka likes to say, a good word for you. And we've just been going through an interesting season. Last week I shared with you how it was my birthday week and I was celebrating and we're moving into, you know, the second half of the year. We are at the sixth month mark and it's very, 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 very exciting. I thank God for everything that he's doing in my life and I thank God for everything that he's doing in your life. Thank you so much for the feedback. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for subscribing because at the end of the day, it's the word of God that is living, that is powerful, that is active, that is causing change in your life and in my life and I'm here for it. So we're going through the month of June and I've just been thinking about what to share as we are, you know, in the sixth month of the year preparing to to go halfway businesses are preparing for half two they like to call it h2 um at my church we are in rest month the month of june that we normally take to rest and abide more in the word of god less activity more abiding um for many voices it's 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 that half half line yeah six months later you set a a, a, a new year's resolution that by this time you should have run 100 kilometers haha <laughs> unintended to some friends of mine who are watching but if you haven't you're probably you know reflecting now and saying okay six months down the road what's the plan and god has put a word of my heart for this particular month and for this particular episode that i believe is going to bless you so right now go ahead and share the link invite friends enemies frenemies your ex your next <laughs> if you know him or her and go ahead and share because the word of god has to be preached for rights and says at whatever cost the gospel has to be preached so if you're joining us you're welcome if you're here for the first time karibu sana we're here every thursday at 1 p.m on the house of the youtube channel if you're here for the second time it means you liked it welcome back and if you're here for the third time surely your family so you should be having the link on speed dial and sharing it all the time as you can see we've done a little bit of touch up changed the environment because I mean half year, why not? Yeah, new things. New things are gone, like like people like to say. So what I'm going to share today is nothing short of a common vibe. I mean, if you've been in, in, in scripture union, if you've been in, 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 in any Christianity, this is a common verse. And the summon title today is having a great expectation. Having a great expectation. And I'm sharing from the common verse Jeremiah 29, 11. Now, Jeremiah 29 11 is like one of those verses where you, like Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So, even tell me about Jeremiah 29 11, obviously, be, I alone know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you, plans of, of, of hope, plans of thoughts of peace. Sorry, I, I alone know the thoughts that I think towards you. Imagine me quoting different, I read so many versions of the Bible, so I'm bringing this and this and that. But I'm reading from the NKGV, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. In uh, the NIV it says, for I know the plans, so you see I was bringing both of them, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Some versions say plans to give you an expected end. So when I'm talking about a great expectation, Technically, I'm talking about an expected end, and I'd like to start by telling you a story. So first of all, I told you that last week I celebrated my birthday, and for me, my birthday is a very important time in my life. Like anyone who knows me knows that these, I'm big on birthdays, I'm big on anniversaries, I'm big on dates, you know, it's a month. Then. Now, of course, when I say that you think I'm big on, on, on anniversaries and milestones, and because, you know, it's a new season, I'm changing, I'm what, which is true, but also, I'm mainly big on those things because of what it comes with. It comes with gifts, and I like to receive gifts. It comes with celebration, it comes with party, it comes with cake, and all these things. So that's part of the reason why I look forward so much to the birthday, because I'm like, okay, how are we going to celebrate? And particularly, I was really looking forward to this birthday of mine, like this past birthday, because unlike my past years of life, this is the past birthday where I'm married. 
right? Like all the other birthdays, I was just a normal person here and there. Not that those who are not married are not normal. Don't quote me and make it doctrine. But however, this was first um, uh, birthday for me where I was. So I am somebody's wife. So throughout the, the, the towards that day, I had a great expectation. I was excited. I was like, I am Mrs. President now. I'm not just the normal Ruby and whatnot. You know, it's my birthday, but you know, and, and finally the morning of my birthday, my dad sent me a message and said, Today used to be your used to be Ruby's birthday, but ever since she changed to Mrs. President, I wonder if it still is her birthday, which I don't really find. So anyway, so the day starts, I'm excited, I go to work, I'm like, oh, like in my heart, I was like, this is my birthday, I'm Mrs. President, what is Mr. President going to do? Of course, that puts Mr. President on, on, on pressure a bit. So if you're watching this for the first time, I refer to my husband as Mr. President, you may be thinking there is something between, there's a connection between my husband and his excellency, your Kavuta Museveni. It has nothing at all to do with the president of this country. That's just how I prefer to refer to him. Anyway, so he, you know, the day started, he sent me breakfast, sent me gifts at the office, sent me this, got back home, there were more gifts the next day, more gifts, it is, it is, it's just been a, a time of celebration. Now, one of the things that I looked forward to that day was the expectation of good, the expectation that it's going to be a good day because I am Mrs. President, because I know that Mr. President cannot let the day just go like that. Now, how much more, as a child of God, should you have a great expectation? One of the things I like so much about this verse is, God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. That, for starters, means that God, in his magnificence and majesty, is seated there thinking about Ruby. Like, that alone should make you feel special. That God himself, in, this is the person who created heaven and earth. Heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool. What recently I was reflecting on the fact that um, a baby, like now for me, yes, it's, it, I, I turned a new age, and from the time I was born up to now, it's been a process of growth. From the time I was an embryo, zygote, fetus, whatever it is, to the time I started to walk, started to learn how to, started how to learn how to talk, and coming to this stage of maturity, which I believe is not the end of still maturing. But God created Adam in a flash. Like all the years of my life to reach where I am, Adam was created in a flash. And Adam was not a baby. The Bible does not say that God created him, created them baby and baby, boy and girl. It says I created them man, male and female. So God created a full grown human being in a flash. So that person who created a full grown human being in a flash is the same person who is saying, I alone know the thoughts I have towards you. What a blessing. God knows the thoughts he's thinking towards you. He's actually taking time. You see, to think about someone is a very intimate process. It's a very personal process. You don't go around driving, doing, being busy, and then you're like, oh, I thought about you, Josh. Oh, I thought about you. Most times you're thinking about the person because, because of something, because of, of how you feel towards them, because of a trigger, because of what you've seen, you know? Like they're, 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 when I think about Arsenal, I think about my husband because he likes Arsenal. So obviously because of the connection I have towards him when I see Arsenal, I'm like, oh, you know? I think about how to make him happy. I think about what he would like. I think about the things that would make him sad and I try to avoid them. I think about how to bless him. I think about him and his future and the person that he's going to become because God has placed me in his life as a helper, as a helpmate, as a suitable help. So when I'm thinking towards him, my thoughts towards him are, am I going to fit in this equation? Because I know um, I know he's going to be a great man. He is already a great man, but this is just, this is just even a sneak, you know? He's going to become a great leader. You know, God, God has destined nations for him. God has destined countries for him. God has destined all these things for him. So how do I fit in the equation? Those are the thoughts that I think towards him. Now, that is me, a human being with fault. And I'm thinking good. The Bible tells us that if you who are evil know how to give good gifts, if your son asks you for fish, you can't give him a snake, how much more will, the Holy, will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So if you who are evil 
Know how to think good things towards your spouse, towards your children, towards your friends, towards your business. How much more God? So the, when the Bible tells us, I, am, I, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God tells us in the Old Testament that my ways are not your ways. My ways are above your ways. So when he tells you that he knows the thoughts he thinks towards you, what a blessing to be thoughtful to God. In Psalms, he tells us that his thoughts towards us are, are like the, the sand on the sea. They are vast like the sand on the sea. Now in Uganda, we don't have a sea, but the closest I can give you to, to what the sea is, is the Lake Victoria. It's not a sea. Don't quote me and be like, oh, Pastor DJ doesn't know what a sea is. It's not. But when you walk by the sand on the seashore, and the, when you go to Entebbe and go to the beach, and you look at that sand, it doesn't come anything close to the sand on the seashore. But the Bible says that God's thoughts towards us are more than the sun. Like they are like the sun, because it's there are too many. There are too many. In other words, you're on God's mind, like you're disturbing His head. He's thinking towards you, and He gives us a sneak peek of what those thoughts are. Says the Lord. He says, "Thoughts of peace and not of evil." Like when God is there and He's thinking about you, He's not thinking evil. He has a great expectation towards you. He has a a great he's thinking great things towards that's why you should have a great expectation because you know likewise on my birthday i knew there is no way that my husband was going to send me a box with a frog because ew why would you send me a box with a frog you get but he said i had a great expectation because i knew that towards me he thinks good things I knew that towards me, he loves me and he wants me to have the best. So when God tells you that he gives his thoughts towards you, are thoughts of peace. He does know that in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. When he tells you that his thoughts towards you are not of evil, that means anytime you see evil around, it's not God. People say, hey, if God was there, why is evil happening? Blah, blah, blah. Peace be still, child of God. God's thoughts towards you are not of evil. And then it says, his thoughts to have you are to give you a future and a hope. A future and a hope. I was listening to someone recently, and the preacher was saying that hope is the expectation of good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope is the ex expectation of good. When you think about the things that are going on in the world, mental illness, depression, mental breakdown here and there, while I am cognizant of the fact that these are actual things that are happening in the world, the spiritual me is also aware that people do not have the word of God in them. People do not understand what it means to have a, a hope. People do not understand what the expectation of good is. Because normally what happens is I expect person A to buy me sweets. And when they don't buy me sweets, I get heartbroken. When they don't buy me the sweets, I, I say, oh, it was such a loss. When they don't buy me sweets, don't trust, don't trust human beings. Oh, men are trash. Oh, uh, fear women. Or A, B, C, D. All that is complete nonsense. When you have the word of God, what does the word of God say? The word of God says that he is to give you a future and a hope. A future and an expected end. Meaning you, me, and all the other A, B, C, Ds need to constantly have a great expectation. Now, I know you're there, you're listening, you're like, okay, yeah, Pastor DJ, yeah, I have a great expectation. Now, hey, what does that look like? I'll give you a simple example. For starters, when the Bible tells us that God has thoughts towards us, if I tell you that I am constantly thinking about you, why would you ignore me? Why would you not be interested? If someone came and told you, by the way, there's a lady there called Ruby, she's constantly thinking about you. Why would you say, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Innately, your number one response is to find out, okay, what is she constantly thinking about me? About, what is she called, what, what, first of all, why is she thinking about me? Like, what is it about me? Why would I be on your mind? Why would you, you see, the thing is, God is such a gentleman. He doesn't, he doesn't impose himself. He's a God who is very gentle. He doesn't possess, the person who possesses is the devil. God is a gentleman. So when you look at stories of Moses, Moses was walking past the burning bush and he turned to look there. That is how God operates. He will give you signs and wonders 
and it is on you to turn because think about it this way if i told you that i love you and i force you to love me that's not love that's force that's that's like rare or defilement or some like it's just forceful so god is not going to force you to love me likewise when he tells you that he has got stewards he's not going to force you and say now come and i tell you what i think he'll give you sneak peeks here and there it is on you to turn and look at that burning bush which is not getting consumed it is on you to turn and say why does this person love me why is it that by 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 grace we have been saved not that we should not by works that we should boast why is it that god who, who was rich in mercy pulled you out from 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 your sins you are dead in sins but he made you alive so your work is to say okay this person who's thinking who thoughts towards me are as vast as the sand on the seashore his thoughts towards me are of, 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 of good and not evil. Your work is to spend more time there. Is to listen and say, okay, why does this person think about me? In relationships, one of the common statements, at least for me, the relationships I've been in, is the person will normally send you a message and say, hey, thinking about you. I don't know if that happens normally, but at least the, the one I'm in, it, that's a thought that normally comes and also from history and the past that's the thought that nobody comes thinking about you so when you love someone you're constantly thinking about them you're constantly on their mind so your work is to just turn your ear and wonder okay what is it that you think about it so what does it look like to have a great expectation for starters you have to spend time with the one who is constantly thinking about you and how do you spend time with god read your bible and pray every day i read somewhere that Someone was working a joke and say, we wake up in the morning and get on our phones and, to, and, and, and go onto social media without confirming that we can talk, without confirming that we actually can function. Yeah. So what happens, God forbid, you wake up one day and you can't talk. How long will it take you to realize that, that you can't talk because you're buried in your phone? How long will it take you to realize that you can't praise God? Praise the Lord, all you people. How long will it take you to realize that you don't have a voice, if at all that was how that, that, that trajectory of life was, was supposed to be? So one, you have to spend time with God. Because when you spend time with Him, you get to know your thoughts towards Him. You get to know His thoughts towards you. And each time you read the Bible, you find yourself in the Bible. And the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's not a thing in the air. It's His mind will be shepherd. When He says, I alone know the thoughts I have towards you, will be. That's exactly what you should you should claim for yourself and say, okay, God knows the thoughts that he has towards me. There's a verse that I read um, just recently. It was from two verses, actually. Let me just get them for you quickly here. One was from the book of Psalms 67, verse 7. It says, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall hear you. For you to identify yourself in the Bible is by reading this verse as God shall bless me. God shall bless Ruby. God shall bless the house of, of, of Ruby, the house of Obote, the house of the house of the house of whatever put your name there and all the ends of the earth shall hear him another verse that i read that was very very interesting to me was in the book of job it says job 33 25 it says his flesh shall be young like a child's he shall return to the days of his his youth so basically god is saying he will refresh you like god takes you from glory to glory so when he says his flesh shall be young like a child's for me, as I read it, is Ruby's flesh shall be young as a child. Ruby shall return to the days of her youth. I recently, I was having a conversation with someone today and they were telling me that when they first met me, they thought I was, I was in, the, in the university. I mean, they met me three years ago. And they thought I was in the university. I look so young. I look so what? Yeah, it's because my flesh has returned to that of a child. It's because my I have returned to the days of my youth. I do not age. I, I, I get better with age, you know? I, I, I get better with, with the knowledge of God because he says that he will renew our, our strength, you know, will mount up on wings like eagles. So having a great expectation is finding yourself in the Bible first because you need to know exactly what to expect. I mean, if I was told that I'm going to have a, 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 a dinner with, uh, with uh, Bill Gates, for example, Bill Gates is going to give me a gift, I'm not going to expect a pain. <laughs> I'm not going to expect a pencil because it's Bill Gates. If it's Elon Musk and they tell you you're going to have a dinner with Elon Musk and he's going to give you a gift, you're not going to go there expecting uh, a pillow because it's Elon Musk. 
But for me to expect right, I need to know the person that I'm dealing with. And the person dealing with is God, creator of heaven, creator of heaven and earth, God Almighty. So expect good. The Bible says that God is good and his love and mercy is endure forever. So if anything, expect good. Because goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Two miracles head your way every day. You're moving into a good life. Expect good. The second thing that you can do to have a great expectation is to confess right. I've spoken about this and spoken about this and spoken about this and spoken about this until I can speak about it now. But I will not tire in speaking about it. The, 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 there's a someone that I shared, I think it's three weeks ago, the power of words, go back and watch it. There is power of life and death in the tongue. The tongue has the power of life and death. It's written in your What you confess, and those who love it will eat its food. What you confess, what you confess determines the expectation that you're going to receive. It determines your expectation. I mean, if you wake up and say, it's going to be a very good day, God may not surprise you by now. Like he's, <laughs> he won't be there and be like, oh, you say it's going to be a hard day. Let me surprise you and change it. No, he's also not going to give you a bad day. But that is what you're expecting. So everything you see is going to look like it's a bad day. One of the common statements we have in our household is what you see is what you see. What you see is what you see. The people here who are watching me and are actually listening to the word, but the others who are watching here, it's like, oh, her earring is, you know, uh, you know, is that her real hair? Is that because that's what they, what they, what they've chosen to see? But what you see is what you see. What you speak is what you will see. What you speak is what you will see. And you see it first before you speak it. So I want to encourage you as you go through your days, having a great expectation is confessing right, and the easiest and safest way to confess is by confessing the word of God. Just picture with me a morning when you wake up and say, Father, I thank you because you're my shepherd. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice in it. I will be glad. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph through Christ Jesus. Thanks be to the Lord, who daily loads us with benefits. Oh, thanks be to God, who heals all our diseases. Today I shall run, and I shall not be weary. Oh, I shall take courage and wait on the Lord. Today I shall test and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, today I shall give him praise out of my heart. Oh, my children are taught of the Lord. Oh, he said that in all things, ask and you shall receive, and believe that you have received. Oh, with God it's, 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 it's possible, but with man it's impossible. Thanks be to God, because I was created through Christ Jesus. I'm created as Christ's workmanship for all good works prepared beforehand. You know, something that I paraphrase. Get the word of God into your heart and it will come out of your mouth. That is how you have a great expectation. By, by confessing, right? Which takes me to the third point. So point one was spend time with God because you need to know from whom to have a great expectation. If you have a great expectation from the world, the Bible tells us that do not conform to the standards of this world. If you spend a lot of time in the world, you're going to expect worldly things. You're going to expect that the only way you can be blessed is through your salary. <laughs> you're going to expect that the only way you can get married is if you've dated for 10 years. You're going to expect all these things because that's what the world has told you. We do not survive on salaries. We survive by God because God is our provider. Jehovah Jireh. The salary is just to enhance kingdom business. The salary is not... <laughs> It's, it's, it's not for you to, you don't go to work for your salary. You go to work to advance the kingdom of God and believe that his one is going to bless you. In Psalms 2 it says, ask of me and I shall give you the nations for your inheritance. So your inheritance is nations, not a salary. But that's a summary thing I've had. It. When you get the word of God in your mouth, it will be very easy for you to confess right and have a great expectation. When you start your day saying that even something in your heart shakes, even something in your heart shakes, what is the first thing that comes out of your mouth when someone gives you bad news? Is it, oh, that's so bad, we're in trouble? No. Train yourself to react with the right things. If you don't have anything good to say, say it as well. Oh, no, 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 no. oh this person is in hospital. Oh, this person is going to have a surgery. This person has got an accident. God forbid, if one thing won't come to anyone near you, your first response should be it as well. Not oh we are doomed no it is well because you know whom you have believed the one you have believed says i will never leave you and never forsake you says that call and kill me sorry that the, 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 the name of the lord is a strong tower the refuge the, the righteous run to it and are safe 
The Bible also tells us that when you're in trouble, when you're in times of trouble, God hides you in his pavilion. I love that verse. I read it recently. I even shared it last time. He hides you in his pavilion, in his tabernacle, and sets you on high. So as long as you're in trouble, the thing to do before calling the situation or saying, this, call on to God. The, this is what the doctor's report says. God, you say that when I'm in trouble, you lie me. You say that when I'm in trouble, you set me on high. Yeah? When you're in trouble, there's a, there's a verse I'm, I'm forgetting, but something that lead me to the rock higher than I. As long as you're in trouble, seek higher. That is how you have a great expectation. Put the word of God in your mouth and start to speak it. And start to speak it. And when I say these things, you may think that, okay, you're going to speak all those things, and then you go out and your day will be so good and everything. No, things may even just fall apart that day. But remember, train yourself to constantly have a great expectation. And then thirdly, one of the ways you can have a great expectation is by controlling what goes into your heart. I saw a picture recently of uh, an ear, but right next to the ear, they had put uh, a baby, like this, uh, a little baby growing. And then they said that the ear is the womb of your body. The ear is the entrance of everything. What you hear is going to determine what is going to come out. So the Bible says it's not what goes into a man that makes him unclean, it's what comes out. But by him it has come out, what has entered. So if all the time you're hearing negative expectation, negative, oh, you're going to do this, ah, that's not, oh, you're going to do this, oh, no, 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 no. My dear friend, your expectation is not going to be great. Control what you listen to. Not all music is innocent. I mean, if you listen to, all the music you listen to is about heartbreak, how marriages are bad, how men are with this, how women are, of course you don't have a horrible expectation of marriage. And you might actually be in your marriage now, and it's just bad because that's what you expect. Every time you you listen to stuff, the videos you, you forward and, and share the most about the church and how the church is, you know, it's ABCD. May God forgive you. Because when you have that, then you're going to have a bad expectation. Having a great expectation is in your hands. Delivering that great expectation is in God's hands. So you have it, you desire it. And then they believe the secret. The Lord gives you the desires of your heart if you abide in Him. So, back to Jeremiah 29 11, we are encouraged today that God's thoughts to us as are of peace and not of evil. So, if you don't have any great expectation, let that be your start. Wake up in the morning and say, Okay, today, God, in the things that He's thinking about me, it's peace. It's peace. It's peace, not of evil. The evil will come, but He's giving you peace in that time. But when you walk through the fire, they won't pursue you. And then he says, he will give you a future. He will give you a future and a hope and an expected end. He will give you a future and a hope. A future is something long term. It's, it's something ahead. It's not just, God is not in the business of just blessing you today and moving on. He's looking at going ahead. So I want to encourage you, friends, have a great expectation as you go through this month of June. Yes, you messed up. Yes, you do have a done in one year's resolutions. Yes, you your heart was broken. Yes, you buried the person. Yes, the disease is there. Keep your eyes on Jesus and have a great expectation. And before you know it, whatever it is that you're going through, you start to fall off one by one by one by one. And friends, one of the ways to have a great expectation really is to allow Christ into your life, to allow Jesus, the, the king, the chief of great of expect all our hope and everything. We have this hope as an anchor for our souls. And if you've not yet accepted Christ into your life, I want to give you an opportunity because it's easy to have a great expectation when you have Christ because he confirms it for you in your spirit that this is possible. Of these three, we make faith, hope, and love. The most important of this is love. So God confirms it to you, the author and finisher of our faith. He confirms your great expectation with his hope through your faith. So I want to give you an opportunity. If you have never given your life to Christ, it's very simple. Just repeat this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me today. I give you my life. Take it and do something significant with it. If you say that prayer, you're born again. There is a number on your screen. Please go ahead and send a message and call that number. 
and share that you have gotten born again and we walk this journey with you and place you in a loving family. You are under new management now, so when the devil comes and whispers in your ear, tell him, I rebuke you, I am the righteousness of God, I am clean, and I'm one spirit with God. For the rest of you, thank you so much for joining. What up? We'll be back next Thursday at 1 p.m. My name is Pastor DJ, but you can call me Mrs. President. See you next week. You're blessed. You're healed, you're delivered, you're glorified, you're elevated, you're rising. Two miracles are headed your way. You're heading into a good land. The love has won. Indeed, let us worship him. God bless you and see you next week. Bye.